This video features the installation of our spring-centered street kit with our street light flywheel. However, kits are available in different configurations based upon the torque being produced at the crankshaft and your style of driving. The installation procedure will be the same except for the disc being used. The ACT kits for this application are conversion kits which include a flywheel and the individual components are not compatible with the OEM clutch or flywheel. For a complete list of kits and their full details and specifications, please see the description below. While this video provides the basics on how to replace a clutch and flywheel, it is in no way intended to replace a factory service manual. Begin by disconnecting the cables from the battery. If your vehicle is equipped with one, unfasten and remove the strut tower brace. Unfasten and remove the battery hold down, battery box, and the battery tray. Disconnect the intake seal from the air filter housing cover. Unfasten the air intake. Unplug the airflow sensor and free the harness. Loosen the air intake tube clamp and disengage the air intake tube from the airflow joint. Unfasten the air filter housing. Remove the air filter housing cover, air filter, and finally the air filter housing. Unfasten and remove the metal splash guard followed by the plastic splash guards on the underside of the vehicle. Loosen the intercooler pipe lower hose clamp. Unplug the electrical sensor at the bottom front of the transmission. Remove the drain plug located at the lower rear of the transmission and drain the transmission fluid. Reinstall the plug using a new washer and tighten it to 32 foot-pounds. Remove the front wheel and tire assemblies. On the driver's side, using a screwdriver or something similar, pry up the stake on the axle nut. Repeat this on the passenger side. On the driver's side, unfasten and remove the axle nut. Repeat this on the passenger side. Loosen the intercooler pipe upper hose clamp and remove the intercooler pipe. Unbolt and remove the battery tray base. Unfasten and remove the airflow pipe. Make sure to disconnect the sensor plug. Unfasten the wiring harness brackets at the rear of the transmission. Unplug all the electrical connectors and free the harness from the transmission.
Remove the lock pins and remove the shift cables from the transmission shift levers. Unbolt and remove the bracket located over the shift cables. Remove the shift cable clips and then move the cables out of the way. Unfasten the slave cylinder and unbolt the hydraulic line bracket. Unbolt the ground strap located on the transmission mount. Unfasten the water bypass pipes from the transmission. Inside the vehicle, unbolt the steering joint and remove it from the pinion shaft. Unfasten and remove the engine cover. At the front of the exhaust, remove the rubber isolator from the mount. On the passenger side, remove the retaining clip from the lower ball joint nut. Unplug the stroke sensor. Unbolt the bracket attaching the stroke sensor to the lower control arm and the bracket securing the stroke sensor to the subframe. Then remove the stroke sensor. Although not shown in the video, unbolt the sway bar end link and remove it from the sway bar. Also not shown in the video, unbolt and remove the front stopper link from the control arm. Unbolt the lower ball joint. Remove the ball joint from the lower control arm. Remove the retaining clip from the tie rod nut. Unbolt the tie rod and remove it from the knuckle assembly. Remove the axle from the hub and then remove the axle from the intermediate shaft assembly. Unfasten the bracket securing the intermediate shaft to the engine, then remove the intermediate shaft from the transmission. On the driver's side, unbolt the bracket attaching the stroke sensor to the lower control arm. Unplug the stroke sensor. Unfasten the bracket securing the stroke sensor to the subframe and remove the stroke sensor. Remove the retaining clips from both the lower ball joint nut and the tie rod nut. Unbolt the tie rod and the lower ball joint. Unbolt the front stopper link. Unbolt the sway bar end link and remove it from the sway bar. Also remove the front stopper link from the lower control arm. Remove the ball joint from the lower control arm. Remove the knuckle mounting bolts. Remove the axle from the hub and then remove the axle from the transmission. Disconnect the harness on both driver and passenger side of the subframe. Unbolt the lower torque rod. Loosen the front and center exhaust clamps.
Remove the hanger from the rubber isolator located at the center of the exhaust. Free the center section of the exhaust. The horizontal bolt cannot be removed from the lower torque rod due to the exhaust. The bracket is slotted so when the subframe is lowered, the lower torque rod and its horizontal bolt will be free. Support the front subframe up into position. Remove the rearmost hardware from both right and left front subframe rear stays. Unfasten the remaining bolt and remove both left and right subframe rear stays. Remove the lower arm mounting bolt on both driver and passenger side. Unfasten the subframe mounting bolts on both passenger and driver side. Remove the cross brace at the front of the subframe. Disconnect any other electrical connectors from the subframe including the electrical connectors for the steering. Lower the front subframe just enough to remove the center section of the exhaust. Also, we were now able to remove the lower torque rod and its horizontal bolt from the... Slowly lower the front subframe making sure no wiring or other parts become damaged. Remove the cooler hoses from the lines on the transmission and plug them all to prevent fluid loss. Unbolt and remove the cooler from the transmission housing and pull it up and out of the way. Unfasten the hose brackets from the main bracket located at the top driver's side of the engine. Then unbolt and remove the main bracket. Install a lifting eyelet at the top driver's side of the engine. We made our own lifting eyelet, however you can purchase one from Honda if needed. Install an appropriate engine support hanger and brace the engine in position. Place a jack under the transmission. Unbolt and remove the transmission mount. You may have to lower the engine and transmission a little. Unfasten and remove the inspection cover. Unfasten and disconnect the starter. Unbolt the transmission from the engine and remove it from under the vehicle. Unbolt and remove the old pressure plate and disc. Unbolt and remove the old flywheel.
On this vehicle, we are installing the ACT Performance Street Kit, which includes our streetlight flywheel. Check and make sure the alignment dowels are in the back of the engine. Missing dowels can cause misalignment of the transmission, which will lead to premature clutch failure. Remove the release fork dust cover from the transmission. Remove the fork and bearing assembly from the transmission. Clean the guide tube, pivot ball, and release fork. If there are any signs of heavy wear on the pivot ball or release fork, they should be replaced. Also clean the transmission input shaft. Place a small amount of lube included with your new kit on the fork pivot surfaces. Lightly coat the guide tube with the lube. Lightly coat the input shaft splines with the lube and slide the disc onto the input shaft to work the lube into the splines. Remove the disc and wipe off any excess lube to prevent contamination of your new clutch. Place a small amount of lube on the bearing pivot surfaces of the fork. Install the spring wire into the fork and then place a new bearing into position onto the fork. Install the fork and bearing assembly into position, making sure the spring clips snaps over the pivot ball. Place the rubber dust boot back into position. Making sure the back of the flywheel and crankshaft mounting surfaces are clean of any dirt, debris, or rust. Install the flywheel onto the crankshaft. We do recommend using some sort of thread locking compound on the bolts. Install the bolts supplied in your kit and tighten them in a star pattern until snug. Then torque the bolts to 91 foot-pounds, also in a star pattern. Clean the pressure plate and flywheel friction surface areas with a non-petroleum based cleaner. Set the disc in position making sure the directional marking is facing in the right way and use the alignment tool to help hold it in place. Place the pressure plate in position and install the bolt. Tighten the bolts equally in a star pattern until the pressure plate is snug and then remove the alignment tool. Torque the pressure plate bolts to 25 foot-pounds also in a star pattern. Lift the transmission back into position. Install all the bell housing bolts and tighten the ones on the engine side to 48 foot-pounds, including the starter bolts, and the ones on the transmission side to 47 foot-pounds. Install the upper transmission mount and torque the nuts and bolts to 40 foot-pounds. Remove the engine support hanger. Place the cooler and the water bypass pipes back into position near the transmission housing. Remove the lifting eyelet from the top driver's side of the engine. Install the main bracket back into position on the top driver's side of the engine, then mount the hose brackets back onto it.
tighten all the hardware. Install the inspection cover and tighten the hardware. Install the cooler onto the transmission housing and tighten the hardware. Remove the plugs from the cooler lines and hoses and reconnect them together making sure to secure them correctly with the clamps. Before installing the slave cylinder we do recommend removing the clutch delay valve. If you want your clutch to last longer, have more predictable engagement and truly feel the benefits of installing a new performance clutch and flywheel then this step is a must do. If your slave cylinder has lots of miles this would also be a good time to replace it. Remove the retainer clip with a pick or something similar. Using needle nose pliers, pull the cap out of the body. Remove the delay valve assembly. Install the cap back into the body and secure it with the retaining clip. Install the slave cylinder and hydraulic line bracket into position. Tighten the bolts for the slave cylinder to 16 foot-pounds. Bleed the clutch hydraulic system. Secure the water bypass pipes back into the transmission and tighten the bolts to 20 foot-pounds. Install the ground cable to the transmission mount. Install and tighten the nut for the hydraulic line bracket to 7 foot-pounds. Route the harness back into position and install any harness brackets that may have been removed. Reconnect all the electrical connectors including the starter connectors. On the passenger side of the vehicle, install the intermediate shaft assembly into the transmission and tighten the hardware securing it to the engine to 29 foot-pounds. Place the axle into the hub and then install the axle onto the intermediate shaft assembly. On the driver's side, install and tighten the knuckle mounting bolts. Place the axle into the hub and then install the axle into the transmission. Position the center section of the exhaust up into place and then lift the subframe up into the position. Loosely install the lower arm mounting bolts, subframe rear stays with the rear stay mounting bolts and the subframe mounting bolts. Also not shown in the video, at this point you can also install the electrical connections for the steering. 
Insert a subframe alignment pin through the positioning hole at the right and left rear of the subframe and into the positioning holes on the body. When aligned, tighten all the subframe mounting bolts until snug. Tighten the lower torque route horizontal bolt to 69 foot-pounds. Torque the subframe and lower arm mounting bolts to 77 foot-pounds. Torque the subframe rear stay horizontal bolts to 69 foot-pounds. Install the center section of the exhaust, making sure to install the rubber isolator into the hanger and tighten the clamps. At the front of the exhaust, install the rubber isolator onto the mount. Install and tighten the lower torque rod vertical bolt to 69 foot-pounds. Double check all subframe mounting and torque rod mounting hardware. On the passenger side, install the front stopper link and the sway bar end link back into position. Repeat this on the driver's side. On the passenger side, install the steering tie rod and ball joint into the knuckle assembly. Install the lower ball joint into the lower control arm. Install and tighten the stopper link hardware. Tighten the steering tie rod hardware to 40 to 47 foot-pounds. Tighten the lower ball joint hardware to 76 to 83 foot-pounds. Tighten the sway bar end link hardware. Insert the retaining clips for the lower ball joint and steering tie rod. Reconnect the harness on the passenger side of the subframe. Install the stroke sensor back into position and reconnect the electrical plug. On the driver's side, install the lower ball joint into the lower control arm. Install the steering tie rod end into the knuckle assembly. Tighten the steering tie rod hardware to 40 to 47 foot-pounds. Install the stopper link hardware. Tighten the stopper link hardware. Tighten the sway bar end link hardware. Tighten the lower ball joint hardware to 76 to 83 foot-pounds. Insert the retaining clips for the lower ball joint and steering tie rod. Reconnect the harness on the driver's side of the subframe. Install the stroke sensor back into position and reconnect the electrical plug. Fit the intercooler pipe back into position. Install the shift cables in position, placing them onto the transmission shift levers and secure them with the clips. Install the lock pins. Mount the bracket located over the shifter cables. Install and secure the airflow pipe. Connect the vacuum hose, tighten the clamp at the throttle body, and reconnect the sensor plug. Tighten the intercooler pipe clamps at both the top and the bottom. Remove the transmission fill plug and fill the transmission with the recommended type and amount of fluid.
Install the fill plug and tighten it to 32 foot-pounds. Install the battery tray base and tighten the hardware. Place the battery tray in place. Install the battery box. Install the air filter housing and tighten the hardware. Connect the airflow sensor and secure the harness in place. Fasten down the air intake and attach the air intake seal. Install the engine cover and tighten the hardware. Install the battery and tighten the hold down. Reconnect the battery cables and tighten the hardware. Install and fasten the strut tower brace. Install the cross brace at the front of the subframe and tighten the hardware. Mount the plastic splash guard followed by the metal splash guard. On the passenger side of the vehicle, install the axle nut and tighten it to 242 foot-pounds. Stake the nut with a punch or something similar. Repeat this on the driver's side of the vehicle. Install the front wheel and tire assemblies and torque the lug nuts to 94 foot-pounds. Inside the vehicle, install the steering joint onto the pinion and tighten the bolt to 21 foot-pounds. Connect the air intake tube to the airflow joint and tighten the clamp. Support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.